Are you thinking about moving to South Carolina? Did you know that the state is actually divided into four different regions? Well, today we're going to explore each one and some of the most popular places to live in each one of those regions. Hi, I'm Keith Lucas with eXp Realty and welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and hit that bell as well so you'll be notified when I drop my new videos. Okay then, let's dive in. These four regions are referred to the Upstate, the Midlands, PD, and the Low Country. First, let's start with the Upstate. This is actually the most western part of the state and it's where you'll find towns like Greenville. Greenville is one of the most charming cities you'll ever come across. It's situated at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. In fact, it's home to the number three best downtown in the country, and it continues to top the national food destination lists. Greenville also has received many accolades and awards. Some of these include the South's Most Beautiful Small Town, that was from Forbes Magazine in 2020, and Best Place to Live from Money Magazine in 2019. And then there's Anderson. Anderson is fondly known as the Electric City. Anderson acquired its nickname in the late 19th century when it became the first city in the South to make use of long distance cables to carry electricity generated from hydroelectric power plants. By 1897, Anderson boasted electric streetcars, street lamps, and the world's first electrically powered cotton gin. Today, Anderson is also known as both the city of hospitality and the friendliest city in South Carolina. Now let's take a hike over to Clemson. It's considered one of the prettiest towns in the state. Clemson is also located at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and along the shores of Lake Hartwell. Clemson is home of the Clemson University, Clemson Blue Cheese, and the South Carolina State Botanical Garden. Then moving to the southeast, you have the Midlands, and our first stop is Columbia, the state capital. Did you know that Columbia is the first city in the U.S. that's actually named for Christopher Columbus? Columbia is affectionately known as the soda city by the locals, but not because any soda was invented or manufactured there. Instead, the nickname comes from an old abbreviation of Columbia, COLA. Here's an interesting factoid about Columbia. Assembly Street, located in downtown Columbia, is incredibly wide for a city street for that time or any time. But what's even more interesting is that it was designed that way back in the 18th century. But why was it built so wide? Well, because the early city planners hoped that it would be too wide for mosquitoes to cross. Now, let's try down over to Aiken. Aiken has been named the best small town of the South by Southern Living Magazine. Aiken offers thoroughbred racing, a rich art scene, and a thriving downtown. While Aiken's most famous today as the winter home for the late 19th century equestrians, Aiken wasn't originally built to be a winter colony for the rich. It was actually a railroad town in 1835, built as the conclusion of the South Carolina Canal and Railroad Company's line that ran from Charleston to the Savannah River. Hamden is rich in history, loaded with Southern charm, and is South Carolina's oldest inland city. Camden had a hard time in the beginning figuring out its name. It first started out as Fredericksburg, then it was changed to Pine Tree Hill, then 10 years later, it was finally named Camden. It boasts a unique and diverse range of shops, eateries, museums, national landmarks, and annual events. Now let's head our way to the northeastern part of the state. We have a region called PD. How and why this region is called PD is a topic I'll cover in another video. So let's talk about PD and our first stop, Myrtle Beach. The city of Myrtle Beach is both a residential and vacation community at the heart of South Carolina's Grand Strand Coast. Apparently, they also had an identity crisis. The original name was Newtown. But the locals didn't really like that name so much, and in 1900, there was a Name Our Town contest, and it was renamed Myrtle Beach, which comes from the many wax myrtle trees that grow along the streets in Myrtle Beach. 
Now, Myrtle Beach is a residential and vacationer's paradise, complete with miles of beaches, piers, actually there's six piers all together, guided tours, and the Carolina Opry Theater. Now let's pop on over to Conway. Conway is one of the oldest towns in South Carolina. It has all the charm and grace of a historic Southern community. Conway's oldest thoroughfare is the Waccamaw River, which flows right through the heart of Conway. And back in the day, it was used for tobacco and turpentine shipments destined for ports around the world. The city is now home to several popular events, including the annual Riverfest and the Waccamaw and Conway Ghost Walk. Heading back down the coastline to Merle's Inlet, Merle's Inlet is where you'll find a historic fishing village, a quaint little town full of history, beauty, and colorful characters. It's tucked away just 10 miles south of Myrtle Beach, and it was a favorite of some notorious visitors of the swashbuckling type. It is rumored that both Blackbeard and fellow pirate Steve Bonet, aka the Gentleman Pirate, would cruise into Merle's Inlet in search of fresh water and to repair their ships and to stash their newly acquired treasures. And now we're off to the Low Country, where you'll find Charleston, South Carolina's port city. It was actually founded in 1670 and is now the largest city in South Carolina by population. It is defined by its cobblestone streets, horse-drawn carriages, and pastel antebellum homes. It is the home of America's first theater, the first golf club, and like a few other cities in South Carolina, it had an identity problem too. Its name had changed three times. Originally, it was Charlestown. Then for a short time, it was called Oyster Point. And finally, it was simply became known as Charleston. It is a tourist and foodie mecca and has been named 10 times consecutively by Conte Nast as the best city in America and nine times in a row by Travel and Leisure Magazine. And just up the road is Somerville, the declared home of the sweet tea. Located just 24 miles from Charleston, Somerville is at the heart of it all. You can take a stroll through the historic downtown area, browse boutique shops, and sample some true Southern style cooking offered by the restaurants that line the downtown area. Or you could just simply take a seat and enjoy the small town charm as your taste buds tingle with every sip of their homegrown Southern sweet tea. Somerville and its surrounding areas are growing quickly with a majority of manufacturers and companies moving into the area and or expanding their operations into the region. The last stop on our tour is Hilton Head Island. Hilton Head Island is known as the largest barrier island on the southeastern coast. Hilton Head is home to one of the top 10 family beaches in the U.S. It's got tons of world-class golf courses, and there are more tennis courts per capita in Hilton Head Island than anywhere else. This 12-mile long, 5-mile wide island has more than 250 restaurants. Let's do some quick math. If you divide 250 restaurants into 12 miles, that's almost 21 restaurants per mile. A couple of other things you should know is that there's no public transportation system, but it does have two airports and six marinas. So those are the four regions and some of the top move to areas in the state. If you'd like to find out more about any of them, please feel free to reach out to me. My number is in the comment section below this video. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell too, so you can be notified of my next video. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.